here from the Appalicious Teacher and today I'm going to be sharing with you the best game to play if you want your students to rock addition with regrouping or subtraction with regrouping. It is one simple game played two different ways and today I'm going to show you both ways. Let's get started. So before you start playing the game, you need to have your pieces. So here you can see are the components for the game. Um, first, you need a flat or a hundreds. You need at least 10 rods. You can add more. Um, and you need at least, I'm gonna say 15 ones, um, if not more. You can even go into 20 ones if you want, but they need some ones more than 10 to make it a little easier to show with the regrouping. Um, so here I have 15 ones, okay? You also need dice. Um, you can play the game with one dice or two. One dice is a little easier. It allows students to do mental math very quickly, um, especially second grade students who are working on, um, who know basic facts. Um, two dice makes it a little trickier, but um, it's a great way to differentiate and it makes the game go faster because the, num the students are moving through numbers faster. So um, it's a teacher choice. You can hand it out originally with just one dice and allow students to play that way. And then as you see them understanding the game, you can put in two as a way to differentiate. Um, okay. You're also going to need a baggie, which is going to store all of these things in there at the end. Now, in addition to these pieces, um, you can put down a hundreds um, place value chart, a hundred tens and ones place value chart or you could have students draw the chart out on their desk using dry erase marker um, and that way they can kind of keep their place value organized um, it's not necessary to play the game because students can play this game on the floor but if you have students who need a little bit more scaffolding that might be a great way to um, scaffold it for them now to play the game um, students need to understand place value blocks very deeply okay they need to understand that a flat represents a hundred and it represents a hundred of these so I like to do an exploration activity and normally we do a place value unit before we teach regrouping and we explore it in there but um, before we play the game I like to explore it again and I will actually sit there and put a um, hundred little ones on top of this for them to see that there are a hundred ones in here Okay. I also like to show that there are 10 rods in here. So I will lay out the rods on top of the flat for them to see that there are a hundred um, or 10 rods in one flat. So here we can see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, and it's important that students know and understand that there are 10 rods in a flat or in a hundred or 10 tens in a hundred. So I like to show them that. And then it's also important that they understand that a rod equals 10 or 10 ones. And I oftentimes tell them like, think of this as being broken up and we can break it apart. Sometimes even if you have foam ones, it makes a great visual to actually sit there and cut your rod <laughs> into the ones so that students can actually see those ones happening. Okay. Back up there. All right. So. Here's where we're gonna keep our blocks and then down here is our playing space. So the goal is race to a flat or a hundred. And so we're gonna do that by rolling our dice. And each time we're gonna be grabbing out the number that we roll until we have to then trade in and then trade in and the first person to get to the flat wins. Now when I play this game as a class, I always like to play the first couple of rounds together, whole group under a document camera, on the projection board, however it's best for you to play, play it together. No manipulatives for the students, just them watching so that they understand how you're trading in ones to get to the rods and how you're trading in rods to get to the flat okay so let's first start by rolling our dice and we rolled a one so we're gonna pull down one and we rolled two we're gonna pull down two and you can see why sometimes using two dice makes it go a little faster now we have six one two three four five six 
And remember, I tell them, anytime you get to enough down here for a, a rod, you're gonna wanna trade it in because the goal is to get rid of all the ones and get to all the rods and then to the flat. So I'm gonna ch double check to see if I can trade in for a rod. So two, four, six, eight, nine. Oh, I'm so close. I just need one more to get to be able to trade in. So I got four, so one, two, three, four. Now I'm gonna look. I obviously have more than a rod here, so I need to go in and trade. So I'm gonna count out my 10 and trade. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. I'm gonna push that back and I'm gonna grab the rod. Okay, now I'm gonna roll again. Here I have three, so I'm gonna grab down three more. One. I tell my students, look how close you are. We're at 10, 13, 17, oh, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then I look and I tell them, uh oh, we can trade in for a rod. Let's do that. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then I'm going to grab the rod and I'm gonna keep rolling. And we're gonna keep playing like this until we make it all the way to the flat. So there you can see I played the game using one dice. Um, it does take a little bit longer, so we sped it up there. Um, but um, at the end, I was able to take all my rods and trade them in for my flat. So I won the game and the game is over. Um, tell your students not to worry about the ones at that point because they have more than 100 here and that's okay. Um, so that's how you would play the game race to a flat which helps teach students about regrouping with addition so to take this game and then apply it to the algorithm or even to the understanding of regrouping when you're having students regroup you're going to show them along with writing it out how those correlate to their base 10 blocks so that's how this game helps okay and i like to play this game for about two to three days before ever doing any type of work with um, regrouping or with actually writing any numbers out. And the reason why is because these help, this game helps them understand how to trade in those ones to get those rods and how to trade in those rods to get to that hundred. It helps them understand how these numbers can work together to create new, um, new versions of each other even though the numbers are still the same. Okay. Now, I'm gonna show you how to reverse this game for when you're doing subtraction. You need rods, you need ones, and you need a bag to store all your pieces, and a dice. And once again, you can differentiate by using two dice if your students are ready. I would start with only one dice because that makes for easier math. So to play, the goal now is to go from a flat all the way down to only one, one left. And whoever gets back down to a one first, wins if you want to do it as a competition. Now it can just be a game against themselves, which is usually how I play the first two days of the game. And then the last day that we play the game, they play against a buddy. Um, so to start with, they're going to start with their flat. And I review once again about how there are 10 rods in a flat and that how there are 10 ones in one rod. Okay. You definitely want to review that place value piece with them before they play. So to play, they start by pulling down the flat into their game area. Remember, this will be like their name tag or a space at the top of their desk or table. And then down here um, is their space to play. And you can, once again, use a hundreds, tens, and ones chart. That helps um, give a little more structure to the game, but it is not necessary. So we're gonna start at the flat and we're gonna roll the dice. And I need to take two out of the flat, but here's the problem. I don't have two to take, so I need to figure out how I can take two. Do I have a hundred of these to fill it up? I do not, so I need to first trade it in. So I'm going to show my students how I'm going to trade in the flat for my ten rods. But I still can't take two out of here. Still can't take two out of here because I don't have two to take. So I need to trade in a rod 
for 10 ones. So let's see, one, two, four, six, eight, 10. And this is why it's important that students understand the values of the rods and the flats and the ones. Okay, now from there I can take two out and move them up to the top. Good. Now we're gonna roll again. And I got six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Subtract again. Oops, six. I'm gonna look. I don't have six to take. So I'm gonna trade in a rod and get my 10 for that rod and tell your students we're not taking out six yet. We have to trade in for the value of the rod. So we have to go in and break it apart. So three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And I tell them that those two left over are not part of these ones yet. This is like still in the place of that rod. Okay, so now I can take away my six. Two, three, four, five, six. Roll again. Four. One, two, three, four. One. Six. Once again, I cannot take away the six. I need to go and trade it in. And have your students walk you through that part about what you're going to do to trade it in. And this helps build the understanding of what that regrouping of a rod looks like. We're physically breaking apart that 10 into 10 ones. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now I can take away my six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Roll it again. Four. One, two, three, four. Roll it again. Three. Can't do that. Need to trade in. Okay? So we're going to keep playing until we have only one one left. So that's how you play the game, race to a one. Remember the objective is to get to one left, and we did. So once the students are done with the game, we're able to clean it up by putting all the pieces back into the bag. And you can, um, I don't like to keep the dice in here. Um, I keep that in a separate bin. But now you have a place value bag for your students that they can either pull out to play the game when they're done with any of their math work, or if you're when you're teaching your math unit, um, your subtraction or your addition unit, you can have your students pull these out to use and to work with when they're actually writing out how to break apart the numbers. And I like to keep them all in a big um, tote or um, yeah, a big like plastic bin, all organized and ready. Um, and I'm going to tell you the best tip I have for you on this one is have a student do these and set them up and just tell them that they need to have one flat, 10 rods, and 15 ones, and that every bag has that. Um, here you can see I have some extra ones, so it'd be great for a student to go through and kind of organize these and make sure that every bag has that so that students can just grab these to play rather quickly, or you can pass them out when you're doing place value work or when you're teaching your addition and subtraction unit. All right, guys, so that is how you play the must play game before you do any type of regrouping work with your class. Um, the game um, Race to a Flat helps build the understanding of regrouping as numbers grow and how they can trade in their ones to make a new 10. Um, and then the subtraction game um, Race to a one helps students understand how they can trade in their rods for new ones to break down numbers smaller and smaller as they subtract. Um, direction pages I do have available as a freebie in my store and at the end of this video I will put um, or at the bottom of this video I will put a link so you can grab the direction pages and that way you can play this game with your class. Happy teaching friends!